What's up guys, I'm back and I'm playing some more Sonic 2 today. So I'm going to be picking up where I left off uh, from Casino Night Zone. And I'm going to be starting Hilltop. So let's do it. Hilltop Zone is always a zone that was very weird to me. The music uh, always felt kind of weird to me, like, it's grown on me, I like, like, this zone is one I was iffy on at first, but it's grown on me, it's grown on me. And for some reason, standing closer to the center of the seesaw makes you bounce higher, I, I don't know how that works. Hopefully I can get the sparkles with Super Sonic. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Like, even to this day, I'm just blown away by how much this game has improved on the original. Oh, and also, here's a bug I found that you can do in the um, Sega Ages version of this game. You can jump on the spike to jump on the loop, jump, charge, drop, dash, and you fall through there. I don't know why that works, but it does, and it's a massive shortcut. It will generally take you two to three tries to do that. And yeah, this, this game's, you know, short and sweet if you know what you're doing. I want to go up. And I'm always really happy whenever I play this game. Oh yeah, I could have just used the spring to get up here. Yeah, sorry if I'm quiet right now. I'm honestly just enjoying the game. I'm just vibing right now. Uh, so that'll take you down uh, to the uh, bottom path. Oh, and look at that, another invincibility monitor. And I got my favorite version of Supersonic, Supersonic with Sparkles. Yeah, honestly, I think Supersonic is a really good uh, completion reward. Honestly, I think Supersonic should have had the invincibility sparkles anyways. Uh, but next up, we're going into Mystic Cave, 
And this is one of my personal favorite zones. I don't know, I always liked the, um, the more eerie atmosphere here. I will say I prefer the um, two-player version of the zone's theme. Uh, same thing with Casino Night, actually. I prefer that. Um, that zone's two-player theme. In fact, I think that's the best song in the game. Oh yeah, the thing with Supersonic that's a bit annoying is when you get 50 rings, every time you jump, he always transforms. Like, there's no way to get him not to do it. Like, as soon as you jump with 50 rings, at the peak of your jump, super, uh, Sonic will always go super. And I'm glad later games kind of made it um, a bit easier to avoid going super by accident. Like Sonic 3, you have to press the button twice to go super. And in Sonic Mania, um, it has its own button, which I honestly think that's a godsend. I remember as a kid, I could never get Supersonic, so whenever I got the invincibility, I would just grab my phone, um, or tablet or whatever I used to watch YouTube and stuff on, and just play Supersonic's theme and just mute the game while I had invincibility going. But now I can um, unlock Supersonic legit. Something I've been wanting to do for ever since I started playing this game, you know? Because I remember seeing Super Sonic for the first time and I'm like, and I was like, whoa, how do you get that version of him? And then I find out you have to do all the special stages and then it all made sense. I was like, oh, so that's what those are for. Um, I might as well go Super. Oh yeah, this level is rather infamous for a particular death pit, which I hope I don't fall into. And I'm probably going to fall in there at this point, at this rate. So that's why I'm moving kind of slow right now, because I do not want to fall in that pit. I feel like I'm getting close to it, but, or maybe I passed it, who knows. Okay, yeah, I passed it a death pit. But yeah, there's a particular pit in this level that if you fall into, you won't be able to get out of. And there's like spikes down there instead of a bottomless pit, which just makes it even worse. Because if you're a Sonic, you have to lose all of your rings and then die. But if you're Super Sonic, it's even worse because however many rings you have, you have to wait for them all to drain so you can finally die. It is probably the most cruel death trap in this game. And I might show it off in an extra part. Oh, and yeah, there is an extra part I was meaning to do for my um, Sonic Mania playthrough. But I never ended up doing that. Um, so I'm gonna, can I get, can I get up there please? So yeah, oil ocean. <laughs> uh, this zone is one that people tend to hate. At first, as a kid, I hated this level, not gonna lie, but it's grown on me. Same thing with even Labyrinth Zone. That zone's honestly grown on me. 
and I know for any other Sonic fan, that's like blasphemy or whatever, but I personally don't mind Labyrinth Zone all that much. However, these seahorse enemies, oh, 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 they can all die. I do not like the seahorses in this level, they are really annoying. So yeah, now that I've got Super Sonic, the rest of this level will be smooth sailing. I won't have to be so careful anymore. Watch I say that and then I get crushed or something. And oh wow, that's just cool. I don't know if I explained how Supersonic works yet. Um, well, for anyone who doesn't know how Supersonic works, basically Sonic's speed gets like maxed out, um, and he's completely invincible, like nothing can touch you. However, you see my ring count is slowly draining one by one. And as soon as it reaches zero, Sonic turns uh, back into normal Sonic. And the issue with that is unless you have a shield, you're going to be left wide open when you transform back. So there is a bit of a risk reward system with Super Sonic. It's like you can make it to the end of the level with them. Cool, you know, you're all set. But if you run out of rings, yeah, you're not gonna have an easy time, because you're gonna probably get one-shotted. Unless you have shield, that is, then you can take one extra hit. Um, I generally take this path right here. It's the same path I take in um, Sonic Mania as well in Ocean Act 2. It's kind of refreshing to be able to. Uh, oh wow, I forgot all about these things. What even are those things? I know they're like spiky, but what are they? Are they just spikes or are they supposed to be some like kind of a tool or something? I don't know about. I don't know. But like I was saying before I got hit, it's pretty refreshing to be able to go through this level without worrying about, like, you know, pulling switches, too. Okay, that sucked. And that wasn't even, like, you know, the level design or anything. That was just bad luck. Uh, but it's refreshing to be able to go through this without getting, um, without worrying about, like, fog and pulling switches or anything, you know? Oh yeah, and I like how even when you have, um, Supersonic, like when you have all the Chaos Emeralds, you still have to put in some work to actually turn into him. Oh, the drop dash in this game is overpowered. Because you can just drop dash up the oil slides, which is something you could not do in Sonic Mania. And I'm at the boss fight. Huh. I hit him seven times in one jump. So literally when he comes back up, I just have to hit him once. Oh, I, I was just way too slow reacting to that. I feel like the whole, like, like the entire zone should have blown up just then. Because, you know, an explosion, an oil. Speaking of which, why does everything that Eggman builds explode? 
So we have Metropolis Zone, and this is the most infamous zone in the entire game. And it's among one of the most hated in the entire series. Shields, Invincibility, and Supersonic are your best friends here. The Shellcrackers have hit bot- oh wait. I don't know how I didn't get crushed by that. The main problem with this zone is the enemies. Cause watch, when I turn into Supersonic, all the hazards and stuff, that would be a problem. It's not so bad when you're super, cause like the actual level uh, geometry is pretty good. It's just, all the, all, not even just the enemies, all the surprise hazards make this zone really hard to go through. Now I know I could have got those rings to make Supersonic last a bit longer, but quite frankly I didn't feel like doing that. Do it. Well, it looks like I had to anyways. <laughs> Don't know why they put that screw so high up. Yeah, those platforms that have the spears in them. I don't really like those. The Asterons are kind of annoying. And oh boy. Oh, the Slicers are easily the worst part of this entire zone. Well, really, this entire game. They're you thought coconuts in Emerald Hill was annoying? The slicers in this zone are even worse. But overall, even without Supersonic, I don't mind the zone all that much now. Right as I say that. Yeah, these shell crackers have hitboxes that I can't even begin to explain. The slicers are annoying because they're, um, whatever they shoot at you. That actually homes in on you. I don't think I've ever taken this path before. <laughs> Who needs invincibility when you can just turn into supersonic, am I right? <laughs> well, I mean, supersonic is invincibility, but you, you know what I mean. Yeah, in terms of the effect, think of Supersonic as a combination of power sneakers and invincibility. Um, and he gets a new look. Oh, and one thing neither of those power-ups to do that Supersonic does do, you jump a whole lot higher. I mean, yeah, you could jump higher with power sneakers because, you know, you had but you had to build up momentum to do that. Supersonic just jumps high because he's cool. Oh yeah, those bumpers right there, if you hold the button uh, when Sonic's bouncing low on them, you actually go up like a lot higher. Oh, and I remember this part right here is where I got my first ever time over. Um, basically, these games have a mechanic where if you're in a level for 10 minutes, then, well, 9 minutes and 59 seconds, according to the in-game timer, 
but really 10 minutes. Um, because the counter doesn't count to 10 minutes. And wow, I got punched in the face by a shell cracker. Um, but basically if you're in a zone for 10 minutes, Sonic will die instantly. And the game will tell you time over. Because Asterons are pretty easy to dodge if you pay attention to where they are and to what angles they're going to shoot at. Because they always shoot at the same five angles, you know, they... You'll never see a Asteron that's like tilted on his side or got his spikes in different places or something. No, no, they, they always shoot in the same directions doesn't make them any less annoying. Because, you know, why should an enemy in this series be able to shoot in five directions at the same time? Um, but, I mean, there are things I like about this zone, don't get me wrong. I don't mind this zone that much anymore. Like, the music here is really good. And I also kind of like the graphics here, too. Because look at that background, it's so detailed. Like, there's a lot going on in the background. And I like how even though this is on the Genesis, the graphics have really evolved from Sonic 1, which was on the same console. Why was a slicer just camping at that teleporter? And that's what I get for holding right to win. And the thing is, I'm not really too pressed about it because I wouldn't have had any um, enough rings to fight the boss with Supersonic anyways. Speaking of the boss, they actually brought this thing back twice and is one of the hardest bosses in the entire series, at least in my opinion. It's not like Egg Antlion hard, but it's still hard. Oh, you wanna laugh at me, boy? You wanna laugh at me, little boy? Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait. Well, that means I have to do the entire rest of this fight without taking any damage. So yeah, wish me luck on that. So this is how I personally like to fight him. Just stand in the corner until he um, does that one attack that covers like the entire screen. And jumping over him can be really nerve wracking. Um, the final part of this fight actually isn't that bad. But yeah, those eggs, those are indestructible. Like, even Super Sonic can't destroy those. The final part of this fight is honestly, like, his second form is ironically the easiest part. He tries firing laser beams at you, but you can easily take him out before he even gets a chance to hit you like I just did. And you know what? I'm gonna do the rest of this game right here. This is gonna be a three-parter, just like Sonic 1. So Sky Chase is a good uh, breather from all that madness in um, Metropolis Zone. 
And honestly, people say the zone is kind of like boring and slow or whatever. But I don't mind it, it's really relaxing. That is until you turn into Super Sonic. Okay, thank you for hitting me. Because I honestly didn't want to go Super. I do want some rings though, so I can actually survive. Or I can just spin Dash off the plane, that works. I bet somebody in the comment section is going to count how many times I die. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, if you look up and down, uh, the plane will actually move in that direction. Oh, and in case you couldn't tell, um, Mirage alone at one, uh, from Sonic Mania takes heavy inspiration from this, uh, zone. Now these nebula enemies, the key to them is jumping over them before they can drop a mine on you. Or a spike ball, whatever you want to call it. Oh no! Yeah, so pro tip for this zone, do not do the spin dash or the drop dash. Those will pretty much kill you instantly. And also, that was a misinput. I didn't mean to drop dash there. I was trying to do a bad neck bounce. But honestly, the zone is so relaxing, I don't even mind. And I never get hit by that. I like doing a on kind of a chain with the bad nick bounce. It's pretty satisfying. Also, I like how Sonic was on top of that turtle enemy. Like, screw you, Tails. I don't need it. Oh, your ride. Oh, and here we see a preview of the next zone, the uh, Wing Fortress which is even harder than Metropolis though. And it actually is the inspiration for um, a later zone in the series, Flying Battery. I always liked how that formation of um, nebula enemies, like they would fly in a V pattern. Really, that, that hit my foot. <laughs> um, anyways, here we have Wing Fortress Zone. And that has always been one of the most memorable moments in the entire franchise for me. You know, you're having fun with Tails and the tornado, uh, flying to the Wing Fortress. And then Tails gets shot down. Doesn't matter how well you do in the game, Tails will always um, get shot down there. Or Sonic if you're playing as Tails. Cause yeah, that's the thing. If you play as Tails, the rules gets um, the rules get reversed. Sonic will be flying the plane and Tails will be standing on the wing, taking out all the enemies for it, um, for Sonic. 
So yeah, that's the only time you're gonna see Tails in this Let's Play. Okay, this part's pretty difficult. Oh no. I made that look easy, trust me. It's not. That's why I stopped talking entirely for that part, because that's... I've died a lot on that part as a kid. Oh, now we're reaching the boss of this zone, which is rather infamous among the fan base. Unless you're supersonic, then this is the easiest boss in the game. Uh, basically, how you would normally do it, you got these three platforms, which are pretty janky. They have these spikes at the bottom. And you have to use those to hit that laser cannon before it shoots out of the laser, because then it's completely invincible. Oh, and also supersonic with his spikes going down. That is kind of cursed. And I like this. This is a good segue into the actual zone. Uh, that comes next, Sonic Reverse to Normal with no rings. That's a perfect segue um, into the next zone, the Death Egg. I said the next zone, the Death Egg. Now the Death Egg is pretty tricky. It's a boss rush and you have to take down two bosses. Uh, first you got Silver Sonic and then you've got the Death Egg Robot which ironically both of the bosses are based on Sonic and Eggman themselves. Yeah, the Death Egg robot is pretty tricky because you have to time your jumps, like your attacks, perfectly. Yeah, so charging up a spin dash is pretty much Silver Sonic's weakness. So the Death Egg Robot, they brought this thing back multiple times. Yeah, basically the timing for this is as soon as he lands or takes a step, you want to jump at him. And you don't want to take too many shots at him, because then he's going to, like, poke you. Boom. So the Death Egg Robot's actually pretty easy once you learn how to get multiple shots in on him. And here we have probably the most emotional ending in the entire, well, classic series at least. And I'm going to shut up so you guys can hear the music.
beautiful. Yeah, that ending, I think I might have actually cried tears of joy, um, tears of joy once or twice when I watched it. I don't know, it was just something about it has always felt so bittersweet to me. Um, I do like the normal ending a lot more because Tails actually saves Sonic's life. Um, while the credits are rolling, I might as well get my thoughts on this game. I think this is one of the best video games ever made, even by modern standards. This game still holds up. If you somehow haven't played the, um, this game, first, what's wrong with you, and second, like, go play it. It's amazing. And, I mean, that's just it. It's amazing. Um, the level design, the music, the atmosphere, everything about this game is amazing. It's such a step up from the original game. And uh, once again, Twip, if you're watching this somehow, your opinion is wrong. Sonic 2 is better than Sonic 1. And yeah, I have a lot of fun with this game, even to this day. Like, this game is filled with surprises. Now, this isn't going to be all you see of this game. Um, I'm thinking about doing a part where I show off the multiplayer. Uh, maybe even have my dad come on here if he's alright with that. Because me and him occasionally play this game together. And I can have him come on and, um, you know, play this game with me. Um, that is only if he's uncomfortable doing that for YouTube. But anyways, we have the logo right there for one of the best video games ever made. I'm gonna be honest, this might be my favorite game of all time. Uh, now, before I sign off for the day, I do want to show off some other stuff. So the ring chain ranking. I'm just going to let the game record that. I'm going to show off some other stuff. There is a challenge mode in this game. Oh, and there's also Knuckles in Sonic 2. And I'm going to be showing all of that off in the next few minutes. So first off, we have a challenge zone. Well, the challenge mode. It calls it challenge zone, but it's really just Emerald Hill Act 1. And basically the goal here is to get 100 rings and get to the end of the stage as fast as possible. So it's a fine balancing act between speed and exploration, which is something I feel this game already does perfectly. And I have basically um, won Fifty-one seconds and forty-four milliseconds. Not too shabby, not bad. It's definitely a lot longer than my standard runs of this zone, but not bad. Oh, so here we have a, some replays. I believe these replays are from... Hang on, let me see. That is from just now, right there. 
And unfortunately, it's not the whole run because I didn't do it all in one sitting. But yeah. So I might as well show off the uh, Knuckles campaign. And then I'm gonna show off, well, not the whole Knuckles campaign, but I am going to also show off Tails um, in Sky Chase. So Knuckles, he's got his sprites and his moveset uh, from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And this is really cool in my opinion. This is kind of the first form of DLC if you think about it. Um, I know. Okay. All right, um, everyone comment down below whether you think this counts as DLC or not. I personally think it does, since it's an add-on to an existing game. But the thing is, you don't really download it, which is what DLC stands for. So, again, comment down below whether this counts as the first DLC or not. Act 2 is what I really wanted to show off. Because Knuckles is pretty OP in this game. Now the thing is with him is he jumps a lot lower than Sonic and Tails. So you do have to keep that in mind when you're playing as him. So for things like the Death Egg Robot, uh, this game comes a lot harder. But for sections like this, you can just glide through the entire stage. Well, to be fair, you can just run through all of that with uh, Power Sneakers as Sonic. But still, I think it's pretty cool that Knuckles kind of has his own way of speed running on this zone. Oh, and I also like how all the flickies turn red. And jeez, this video is nearly an hour long. So yeah, it's gonna be a while. Well, I mean, you're watching this right now, so... No point in me saying it's gonna be a while before I upload this, because, you know... In... Like, when you're watching this, obviously it's already going to be out. But I'm saying, like, from the past, this is going to take forever to process. <laughs> um, but I do also want to do Sonic 2 and show off Tails, because he's a little bit different from Sonic as he can fit into tighter spaces without being crushed. And, well, the Sky Chase, that's the main thing I want to show off with him. And like I was saying when I did this with Sonic, the roles get reversed. Sonic is the one piloting the tornado. <laughs> that voice crack though. Uh, Sonic is the one piloting the tornado, and Tails is the one on the actual wing. What is up with all these- <clears throat> I'm so sorry about that. I don't know why I'm having so many voice cracks all of a sudden. Yeah, that's another difference between Sonic and Tails. Um, I have a lot more voice cracks when I play as Tails. And that was just it. Obviously, that was a joke. I don't actually get more voice cracks when I play as Tails. Those two things have nothing to do with each other. I think it's because I spent so much time talking and just gushing about this game. Okay, but I think you guys get the point.
And that also extends to the opening Wing Fortress, where whoever is piloting the tornado, they get shot down. I see, look, Sonic is the one get that gets shot down instead. Oh, and if you try to stay on the tornado with them, like as they're being shot down, then there's a bottomless pit down there. Is there anything else left to show off? I mean, I could do um, Knuckles as a time attack, but... It, um, I think I pretty much showed off everything. Oh yeah, the thing with this version of the game is once you beat the game, you unlock an exclusive, well, not exclusive, this was in the 3DS port as well, but you unlock a mode called Super Sonic Mode. Same thing with Knuckles and Sonic 2, you beat that, you get Super Knuckles Mode. I'm basically Super Sonic Mode. You might be asking, well, what exactly is different about it? Um, well, for starters, you can't pick Tails, you can only play as Sonic, and the second thing is, you start the game with all, um, seven Chaos Emeralds, as the name implies, but also, look at my ring count, I start with 50, meaning I can turn into Super Sonic immediately. Meaning, Super Sonic basically has his own campaign. So yeah, this is pretty cool. This mode basically treats Super Sonic as his own character rather than a power-up. So yeah, that's about it for this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed this let's play, um, if you did, definitely like the video. And leave a comment down below, tell me what you think about this game, and feel free to share some memories you have with it. Wait, I might as well show off the bad ending of the game too. Um, yeah, so, bad ending time it is. And yeah, this is a near, uh, this is probably going to be an hour at this rate. Um, so the death egg. So I got to do this boss rush again. Oh, and there was one more thing I wanted to show off after this that I nearly forgot about. Oh yeah, with Silver Sonic, I think the only places you can hit him in are his forehead and his chest. Wait, what? That second hit doesn't count? I know you guys saw that too, and I fell right through Eggman. So yeah, I think that's the thing with this game. If you, like, I think the thing is, if the screen shakes, well, when the screen is shaking, that means if you try to attack Eggman, you're gonna fall right through him. And I hit his spikes, wow.
Okay, we're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Um, next thing. You know what, if you want to see the bad ending, just look it up for yourself. Um, there's a glitch in this game that's pretty well known, where Sonic's color palette gets all messed up. And this glitch is known as Ashura, and basically, well, look it up if you want to know how to do this. Basically, go into debug mode and spawn in a bunch of waterfalls and just hope for the best. And there's actually different versions of Ashura as well. Like, this is not the only color scheme you can get for them. Um, that's... I think what happens is, because there's so many waterfalls, the game just gives Sonic's, um, the game gives Sonic Emerald Hills color palette in order to compensate for the fact that there's so many, uh, blue objects at all at once. Now I do want to show off the bad ending of this game. Um, because the bad ending actually has a lot more weight, in my opinion. Uh, not just because it's the supposed bad ending, but just because it shows, well, you'll see what I mean. Okay, hey, that was pretty cool. Spin dash to right through them. Okay, I promise I'm actually good at this game, guys. There we go. Yeah, don't even try to jump at him. You're most likely going to hit his spikes. I keep having mini heart attacks every time I jump at him because I keep thinking I'm going to hit the spikes. Okay, so here's the bad ending for the game. And then after this, I'm going to wrap things up. So, you know, it's the same as, um, the good ending so far. And I kind of like because it's like grayscale, almost comic book style of presenting, like, what's going on. I like this ending a lot more because Sonic's falling down from space to Earth. He's probably going to die, but then Tails comes in and saves him. And then you get Flickies instead of Eagles. And honestly, I like this ending more. It just has a lot more weight to it. Because it shows Tails actually saving Sonic's life. But yeah, that's gonna do it. You guys don't have to watch the credits again. Um, but that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, again, leave a like, comment, all that stuff. And I will see you guys for the next Let's Play. And I'm thinking about doing reviews sometime in the near future. And if I do a, rev a review, my first one will most likely be Mega Man 11, as I have some pretty good things to say about that game. 
Um, anyways, this video has been nearly an hour. I'm gonna sign off now. See you guys. Peace. Take care.